In, in this video, I will show you how to work with Apache Cassandra. It's a powerful open source and NoSQL database. Uh, on my local environment, I'm running it as a Docker container with the official Docker image from Cassandra. And if we want to do the same to be able to follow along this example, you can go to the URL that I'm showing here, which is cassandra.apache.org slash underscore slash quickstart.html. Uh, I want to show you an example where we connect to Cassandra database, read some data, write some data and disconnect again. So pretty simple example, but it covers the most important things from Cassandra. So let's now head over to talent and to the console. Okay, here I've got in the Cassandra job. I will open it and to show you the corresponding configuration here. Like I said, we connect and we disconnect. We read some data from a shopping cart, a column family from a shopping cart table, and also we will write some data to this table. All right, so let me close this again because now, first of all, we'll go back to my uh, Docker terminal for my uh, Docker instance that I have here. And what I want to do is uh, I want to show you the contents of this directory. And also here I got a little uh, Cassandra uh, QL script available and this script contains some uh, information to load uh, to create a key store a uh, key space sorry uh, called store in and this uh, cassandra instance and then a table called shopping cart and insert two rows into this table so what i'm going to do i'm using cqlsh uh, the command line of cassandra with the dash f parameter uh, providing the file name to load uh, this data into this uh, Cassandra instance running in this Docker image. And now I can just uh, execute cklsh to connect to the command line of Cassandra itself. And I can now say uh, describe uh, key stores um, oh, not describe key stores uh, describe key spaces. Sorry, I always get it wrong. <laughs> and then we can see we have the store uh, key space. Okay, so I can now say, okay, describe a uh, store. And we can see in the uh, structure of what we actually just created by executing in this uh, script. And now we could actually also look at the data that is in this shopping cart table by doing uh, this query and we will get something like this output on the console. And this is what we are going to use in our example in talent now. So we are going to create the Cassandra connection in talent. We are retrieving this uh, shopping cart table schema and we are going to read this data from this table. All right, so let's head over to talent open studio, uh, create a, a new Cassandra connection can be done here in metadata and NoSQL connections. Right click and select create connection and give it a name. For example, simply Cassandra and click next. Here we have to select Cassandra, Cassandra 3.0. In my case, it's indeed localhost and this port and the key space is called store. Once I have this information, I can check it. If everything is fine, it should show a message like this with connection successful. Otherwise, if you have an arrow, something like this here, you will always be able to hit this details button and see more information here on what actually went wrong. You also have horizontal and vertical scroll bars in case you want to see everything. So it should be fairly simple to get this up and working as far as you have it set up runs uh, in the correct way. And once I'm finished, I can click on finish here to store this connection in my metadata, as you can see here, right? Now we have this shopping cart column family and we want to get its schema. It's also pretty easy here. We can right click retrieve a schema. And here we have it already. I have only this one. So I click next here we can see the schema that is actually there. And one thing we can already do here is for this column, last update timestamp, 
we can provide a good date pattern because this is not provided by default. And when we look at the data here, we can see we at least have data up to milliseconds level in our table. So we should provide a date pattern probably that covers something like this. So we can do uh, select this pattern here but adjust it a little bit because we don't have any time zone here. So in the middle, instead of this T with a single quotes around it, just add a space. And instead of the many capital S's, just leave three capital S's there. This should be fine. And then we can click on finish. And this information will be stored as a metadata schema here below this NoSQL Cassandra connection. Now we're good to go to use this in a job. So we will create a new job here. I right click on this section for big data and cloud folder, create a job, call that job Cassandra as well, right? What a surprise. And then we are going to add the components first. First of all, pre-job, then a post-job component. Then we're going to output the data to the console. So we need a log row component and then all the necessary Cassandra components. First is Cassandra connection, which I'm going to place here at the top. Then we're going to use Cassandra input, which I'm going to place here at the left. And then we have Cassandra close, which I'm going to place here at the bottom. All right, these are all the components we're going to use for the moment. Now we're going to connect them. I select T pre-job component, right click on it, trigger on component OK to T Cassandra connection. Uh, the same here for Cassandra input, right click row and main to T log row. And on post job, right click trigger on component OK to a Cassandra close. All right, we can save this job just while we are developing it. Now here we can see on the Cassandra connection component, we have built in property and we're missing at least the server name, but we defined this connection already. So we can go here down to the place in the repository in metadata and NoSQL connections where we have this connection and just drag and drop this onto this Cassandra connection component. And it will switch property to repository and have the respective information here available. And for as far as the Cassandra close component, we don't have to do anything else because we only have this Cassandra connection uh, once in our job. So this part is fine. Uh, one more thing I have to do here now is I have to configure this Cassandra input component. First of all, here we can now use the existing connection, of course, but we also need a schema and key space and column family uh, information. So for this, we already defined uh, this, uh, we already obtained uh, this schema here uh, from in Cassandra metadata itself. So we can drag and drop this onto this shopping cart entry onto Cassandra input component. And we can propagate the changes because it now has a schema and it will now fill key store, uh, column family. And here it will say repository and you can see it's now saying NoSQL Cassandra shopping cart. We can also have a look at the schema, just selecting view schema here and hitting OK. And we can see it has uh, this uh, schema information, which is absolutely fine as you can see here. All right, so what else to do? One last thing is we have to adjust the query here because select ID name from employee would not work. We will at least have to do as the very simplest thing here, store dot uh, shopping underscore card. Okay, and then we can basically go ahead and run our job. And here we see the two lines uh, on our console, which come from the Cassandra input. Maybe I switch that to table. And you may have seen these red lines and you may have gotten nervous, but don't worry. It's just a warning that in the future, uh, something in this component or in the used components will maybe not work anymore. All right, but this is a easy way to get data from Cassandra, as you can see here for these three columns, right? We could also obviously go ahead and filter and something like this, but it does not make much sense if we not have much data in our table. So what we can do, we can add a bit more data to our table. 
let's drag and drop this shopping cart schema again into our job, create a T Cassandra output from it. Okay, so I move that over to the right a little bit. I add a tmap component and I add a, a row generator component as well. And in this row generator component, I also want to use the same schema here. So I drag and drop that on row generator. And the nice thing here is uh, also there for the schema it works. I connect the row generator to tmap and tmap to shopping cart output to Cassandra output, right? And I can call that Cassandra. And here I can say yes to get the target components schema. Then in tmap, we basically just do an auto map because on the left and on the right, we have also the same data types. So basically we could also leave out this tmap component, but in just in case, it's maybe better to have that here at least for the moment. Then for last thing, the row generator, we double click and we have to select some functions to fill these three columns with values. Right. This here is a user ID. It's kind of a name or something like this. So we can select talent data generator get first name as a function here. Then for the item count, we can get a random number by using numeric and dot random. Let's say we have between one and uh, 1000. So we adjust the min and max value and the last update timestamp we can get in the talent date, get current date to our help. And I don't know, we don't probably need many rows, so we will go with 20 and hit OK. And we could now run this job, OK? Select uh, this other sub job and deactivate it for the moment, OK? And then we go ahead, go to the Run tab, hit Run again, and we will see the result of this. OK, we should now have the job has finished and uh, more information in our table. We can verify this here. All right. And we could now filter on something like this here. OK, then in Cassandra, we have to explicitly allow filtering if we want to filter just a subset of this data. So let me show that again to you by deactivating this sub job here, but activating again this input sub job, this read sub job. Um, what we can do here now is we can write some simple query like uh, where, uh, what's that column again called, where item underscore count uh, larger than, uh, let's say 200. And then we explicitly have to say low filtering because it could have a really unexpected behavior in Cassandra to execute a query like this, especially when you talk about larger data volumes. Okay, then we could execute this thing again and we can see we won't get all the rows, right? We, we have just 14 rows and we now have um, at least those here with five and two in our database, which are left out, sorry, 17 rows and one more uh, when we execute in this more specific query. And one last thing I wanted to point out here is when I don't want to have all fields, obviously I can like in databases or in other occasions uh, specify the fields explicitly. For example, I just want user ID and item count, right? I'm maybe not you, uh, interested in the uh, update date. So I can do something like this. But then I also have to uh, either switch the schema to build in or at least here in the uh, schema say uh, that this column, sorry, that this column, what was I now? Uh, this column is not in my query anymore. And then say OK and propagate in the changes, right? We will now see when I execute this again. It works and we just get the uh, smaller output with one column less in, in this case. All right, and that's pretty much it on uh, how to work with Cassandra in Talent, the most important things around that. Uh, if you have any questions, feel obviously free to send them to me. Also look in the Q&A and now get your hands dirty. See you in the next video.